Hey everyone, this is S. M. Pratt, and by very popular demand, we are going to talk about the recent PSA price increases. I think every single person and their dog messaged me to talk about this one. So I'm going to try to do my best to cover what's going on. I'm going to talk about the objective mathematical part of it, and then we're going to talk about the emotional part of it. And I understand passionate collectors are very passionate, but I'm going to try to do my best here to soothe some of that frustration and also try to provide some solutions and clarity on why this is something that most people expected and also why it's not unique to PSA. You heard it here first, we're really gonna go deep into that uh, because I think a lot of people just wholesale don't understand the magnitude of what's happening right now at PSA. So quick recap for what's going on. The value economy and regular tiers have dramatically increased in price. I think most of them doubled. So value is now $20 per card, economy is $50 per card and regular service is 100. What I also thought was interesting is value has a 500 declared value per card. So meaning each card you submit to that service can be up to $500. I think that is a good perk. That's the silver lining out of all of this. But of course, nobody wants to pay more to get their cards graded, right? So to start with, let's do a quick recap what's going on in the past two years for PSA. Back in May of 2020, they had a 1 million card backlog. I, where do you even start with that? Like, how do you even, this whole grandma room that I'm in right now, I don't even know if we could fit a million cards. Like, where do you start with a million cards? That's baseline. This is like practice. This is the starting point. Then you had the shutdowns in California. Then you had 100,000 cards going into PSA every single week. 100,000 cards per week. That's literally 10% of the backlog knocking on the door every single week. In that time, they hired 167 employees to try and keep up with this demand. And what happened towards the end of the year? They had another 21% increase. And then guess what happened from January to February of this year? They had a 48% increase. To put that in context, you have to just instantly double your staff. Like, I'm talking like whatever Pokemon is that does double team, there's like five Scythers that appear at once. That's what PSA needs to do in real time. Like just instant hire people. And to really dig deep into that, the hiring process for graders is extremely cumbersome. In fact, I can't think of a more cumbersome job because it's niche, not a lot of people know about it, and the trading process is usually months on end. It's not like hiring someone to work the register, hiring someone to stock shelves. It's a very particular job. There are a lot of parameters and things in shorthand you need to understand and learn. Therefore, it's not easy to just get a bunch of staff to keep up with that demand. You know, even if the most like driven, entrepreneurial, like a thousand percent energetic person was trying to do their best to keep up with that demand. It's just humanly impossible. It's literally not possible to get that amount of people in that short of time. Like to have a 50% increase in one month is just, that's unreal. That is unreal. And of course, businesses would kill for this. This is a very luxury problem the PSA has at the end of the day. But what it does for the customer side, we're gonna bring the frustration, don't worry, everyone's like, all right, shut up with the math. I don't wanna hear the logic, I'm just mad. So the frustration, of course, is that the turnaround times keep getting longer and longer and longer. You know, it's just, that's what's been for a while. You know, turnaround times just keep getting longer, out of reach, you know, I'm just waiting, it's like a, like the Oregon Trail at this point. I'm like, will I get a little telegram telling me that my PSA order's back? I'm not sure. You know, you're waiting like it's a voyage in like the early 1900s or something. That's what it's been for a long time. So the only way to counterbalance this is to slow down the cards. And people propose, you know, what if PSA just stopped accepting submissions? Well, they tried that and it didn't work. You know, going back to the shutdowns, they were literally shut down. And what happened? People were still throwing 100,000 cards at their doorstep every week. More specifically, they cut off the voucher membership options. So no more of the voucher grading. They knocked out bulk. Now they just have value and, and higher. You know, they even raised prices before and it still didn't do the job. So the only way is to balance out that price per quantity. An easy way to understand this is rather than sending in like a thousand cards at $10 per card, now you send in 500 at the same cost. So what that does is it slows down that like never ending cavalcade of cards going into PSA and therefore you can get back to this equilibrium of a turnaround time being an actual number. So that's what's happening in a nutshell. And I cannot emphasize how impossible it is to keep up with this demand. And more specifically, this isn't unique to PSA. Before the edgelords get their fingers fired up, 
and they're ready to go, be like, oh, we're saying this because of PSA. I don't care what grading company it is. You heard it here first. Any grading company experiencing this is going to have the same exact dilemma because this isn't a company problem. It's not a professionalism problem. It's not a whatever, whatever business problem. It's entirely a demand issue. It's entirely too much supply coming in because of this insane demand for collectibles. They just simply can't keep up with that demand. And it's not unique to PSA. They just happen to have the largest market share. Other companies have already increased their price. Give me any three letter abbreviation for any company. They've not only increased their price, they're constantly trying to keep up with what's going on. At minimum, they're trying to maintain what they're doing. And typically what they're also trying to do is keep up because the demand is moving in one way as, as we speak, you know, as I'm making this video, it's going like this. So it's again, not unique to PSA. I think people really need to understand that. It's just that PSA has majority of this market and the numbers reflect that. No company has the quantity that they do. So that's everything in a nutshell. Now, getting into the emotional part, let me try to throw some other logic at you. I made this little meme, like a tongue in cheek meme on the thread of E4 with a little like, Laughing Pikachu, where your PSA cards, on average, have like gone up exponentially. Some of them 10x, 20x, some of them to the moon. Like Some of the growth on these Pokemon cards in the past couple years make Wall Street bets look like a retirement facility. Like The rocket ships in Pokemon are just like way beyond GME stock. Like It makes GME stock look like some cranberry oatmeal cookie at some retirement center. Like This stuff is just on another level. So... Why I'm saying this is because a lot of Pokemon cards, graded PSA Pokemon cards in particular, have 10 x Meanwhile, the cost of grading has 2 x You know, I think it's something that was overdue and clearly the price was a little too cheap because the amount of cards being submitted was just hand over fist. So why I'm, why I'm emphasizing that growth in value is because people have to look at both sides of the scale. This is essentially just reality talking at the end of the day. You know, these are the both sides of scale here. You know, the cost per grading and the value of your item. You know, if you're at a point where you're sending in a thousand dollar plus card at a ten dollar service tier, that's a very incongruent scenario. You know, it should be a little bit more balanced. And you know, I think that's what this is at the end of the day. Now, for people who aren't satisfied with that, uh, let's go through some options here. Let's do some more reality talking or the pokey dad that I don't want to be, but I have to be because everyone turns to me, you know, to provide that clarity. And the answer, number one, that I think a lot of people really need a reminder is that some people are talking like PSA is shutting off their electricity right now. <laughs> like PSA is not shutting off your water. They're not taking your groceries. They are not cutting off anything you need to survive. These are luxury goods. More specifically, you don't need to grade cards. I know that's tough love. I know people don't want to hear, it, but it needs to be said. You don't need to grade cards. Some of my favorite cards, in fact, the like majority of my favorite cards, we got this guy right here. I have so many of this Voltorb because I love this Voltorb. I have them in a binder. I look at that binder. You know, this guy I look at a lot because he's sitting right here next to me, but I look in binders all the time. I'm in binders more than I am graded cards. You know, I, it's just where I go in my downtime. Point being is that even the biggest players in this game, you know, with the most rocket fuel, the people with the most diamond hands out there, they mess with binders, you know, that's, that's their wheelhouse. Like that's, so we don't just do one thing, you know, and why I'm saying that is because I think people need some perspective here that you don't need to grade your cards. Like, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills reading some of these comments that people are talking about. Like they're talking about like PSA came in and, and shut down their house. It's like, you just can't grade a card at the same rate really. Cause it's like, you can still grade. It just costs a little bit more. Uh, you know, there's still affordable options with middlemen, you know, maybe you just slow down your quantity. I remember when I started grading, like what, she's like 13 years ago now, like back in 08, I was paying $20 per card on average. Cause I didn't know that there was a service under regular, <laughs> like that's how new I was. Like I was so fresh that I was like, oh, okay. I just pay the regular service for everything. And so I would send in like maybe 10 cards or 15 cards, maybe 20 cards in order. And that was it. You know, I didn't do these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of cards. So, you know, that's why for me, it's easy to adapt. And more importantly, I'm kind of leaning in to motivational speech at this part. But for these people who are just relentlessly mad and relentlessly frustrated, like, don't wallow in that. Like, don't create this mud pit of, of like, permanent citizenship. Because not only are you going to be unhappy, you're going to miss so much opportunity. And you're not going to enjoy the hobby. You're not going to enjoy what you should enjoy. You know, don't let this, like, take over. Like, take, like, ruin your day. Like, 
I've just seen so much vitriol and I get it. Like I get being frustrated in a moment. Like I felt it when I saw it. I'm like, okay, great. Now I have to pay twice as much for all this. But that was it. It's just over right there. You know, I talked about this before, Logan Paul and things like that. It's like, I get having a frustration, but that like staying mad and it'll become part of your identity. It'll consume you. You don't want that. And I just want to get that out there because there is so much emotion in this hobby. It's a passionate thing, what we do. It's very emotional, but it can control you and, and take take you down. And I know a lot of people have been around as long as me who, are, who have like fantastic mud pits. Like they're just wallowing. I know guys who are just wallowing. They're just like rolling around in, in the mud for like a decade. You know, they still think everything from Pokemon Go is in a bubble. You know, there's people who still rolling around in the Pokemon Go bubble, you know. So you just don't want to do that. That's that's the pro tip I can give you is, yes, it's frustrating to pay more for cards. But again, when you look at the reality it makes sense. And more importantly, it's the only way they can slow it down. You know, for people who are frustrated with the turnaround times, you got to pick your poison here. There's the SM Pratism. Like, you genuinely have to pick your poison. Like, you either want to pay a little bit more to get the turnaround times down, or you want to keep paying less and the turnaround times just become like a space voyage. Like, they're going to be gone like five years. They're going to come back with like a whole generation of kids, you know, if you, if you don't want to pay more. So that's all it is at the end of the day. This is the only way to balance it and throttle everything. That's all PSA is trying to do. And again, it's not unique to them. It's a demand issue. All these other grading companies are doing it to a smaller extent. And mark my word, if you're one of those people who's frustrated, you're like, I'm going to send to whoever, I'm going to send another company, go ahead. It's only going to add to the point that I'm making that they're going to have to do the same thing. Because now that part of that $100,000 card a week thing is going to go to them. And they're like, well, now we need to raise the price because our business just went up 50%. It's all the same thing. They're just trying to balance out and adapt to demand. So anyway, hopefully that helps. Again, I'm trying to be as sympathetic as possible to the emotion, but I'm also trying to be real uh, because you don't want the emotion to take you down. <laughs> like it's, you got to understand these are luxury goods. Of course we love them. We don't need them to survive. You don't need to grade your cards. The situation makes sense at the end of the day. PSA is just simply trying to bring back the equilibrium of a turnaround time to an actual time instead of like a friggin' Titanic voyage that it was before. So there it is. That's my take on the PSA price increase. You know the deal. Let me know how I feel. That's pretty much it, guys. Until next time.